probably nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, it was originally started by a German lady. She was she's a cheese or she was a cheesemaker here in Ireland. Um, she sold a shop. She does have another one, but since I've taken it over, my focus is mainly on Irish farmhouse cheese. Like normally now, and this is like the counter is very like the stock is empty now because. It's the time of year, there's yeah. not many customers, and you're now just trying to mine and stuff. But mm -hmm. normally, like, the, my balance, what I always try to aim for is 90% Irish, Irish mix. And then I'll have a few, you know, foreign continentals, the Parmesan, Manchego, a few of those. But always 90%, and the same with a lot of the products here as well. And the one thing I've discovered is, since I've done it, it's so easy. My biggest problem is, there's so many that I have to ring some of them and say, no, I don't need cheese from you this month because I've just too much. Do you know, so there's so much Irish cheese. And there's loads of Irish cheese, a lot more even than I would have known when I started. And I would have worked with cheese makers and stuff. And like examples are that someone might make one particular type of cheese that we all know, but what happens then is they're making maybe a smoked version or maybe they're making a harder version or softer version. And maybe they're only experiments. So most cheesemakers probably make about five, six different cheeses. You might not know them for one or two, but they're making other ones. And a shop like this is great because sometimes I'm the only one that gets that because maybe they've only 10 wheels. So they'll sell it at their own farmer's market and maybe I'll sell it as well. Like, you know, and my, um, my customer base here, like obviously it's, it's a really, really good tourist town, but the customer base, we have a fabulous local customer base and a very good Irish customer base like most people in Ireland and because it's a quite a unique shop and I was quite lucky that the shop like you know was created as a unique shop most people in Ireland if they like the cheese they will know about this shop which is very very fortunate it's great but it's um, it is fabulous and I'm lucky as well that the staff that I have working here they buy into it as well and I think like that's probably it fits in what you're done but like if you can get the staff to buy into what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like they feel as passionate about Irish food as I do. And like we often will, every year we'll go away on a field trip somewhere and we'll go work with a couple of cheese makers to learn how to make cheese or whatever. But just give them to know why is this one so special? Why is it, you know, why are we talk? why is, why are we always saying this one is good and this one is good, but you really, really get a sense. So I know it is brilliant. But I do have a little bit of cheese for you here. Um, and it's funny, like, so normally the cheese, like what I was saying, is 90% Irish here. And sometimes I forget, I might have some really good continental cheese, but I almost forget about it. People be like, what's that? And you'd be like, oh, forgot about that poor fella. Um, he's our Spanish friend or whatever, like, but mainly Irish. And it's incredible even to see where Irish cheese is going. Like, and what I mean by that is, like, they're now, in the last sort of five sort of years, you're starting to see them getting out of safe zone, not making cheeses that are very easy to make, but starting to make cheeses that are a lot more difficult to make, but also the market is there. And one example now, I don't have it because I'll only have that for small periods during the summer. There's a fabulous guy up in uh, sort of West Limerick, North Kerry, so uh, nearly stolen, sort of pushing up that way. Jim O'Brien is a farmer, and he's now making a, a brie, which would be the equivalent of, if you're in France, a smelly, stinky brie. <laughs> like, really good, like, and just, oh my God, it's incredible. But the market wouldn't have been there for that 10 years ago. Like, you know, it's a difficult one to make. It's a difficult one to even mind here on the shop. Like, you know, as soon as you cut it, you're almost minding it all day. But the, once you built up the customers, well, it's amazing. So it's the shed, I think, from an outsider's point of view, I was amazed coming from the continent yeah. fish, mm -hmm. where you have a lot of cheeses, and here Holland, mm -hmm. whatever. But, um, you know, cheddar. Cheddar was the thing, and it's yeah. either the mature cheddar, excellent little Wexford cheddar, whatever. But there was just cheddar. But there's, and it's incredible yeah. how much it has changed. And even some of the yeah. ones, like I give you a taste of some of the cheddar oh, I yeah, have here. Oh, yeah, I will buy some cheddar from yeah. you, yes. And the <laughs> cheddar from the likes of what I will buy yeah. is very different than your, so the, your supermarket oh, yeah. cheddar. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is the two-year-old raw cheddar. Yeah. Like most of these guys, like one example is this lady here, she makes cheese in Kilorglan. You, do you know, some of you might know where Kilorglan is. It's only maybe about a half an hour, 45 minutes away. She's, you know, Wilma. Wilma yeah. And Wilma probably only has about 25, 30 cows. And like, it always sounds like a lovely romantic story, but like <laughs> every time I go to get cheese, 
she's milking the cows like and she like the yeah. 20 cows her or her husband um johnny yeah i always tell people wilma and fred and they're like <laughs> Really? <laughs> no, it's Johnny. Yeah. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you a little sample. Um, and another thing that I started doing as well, which, um, like the good thing about the peninsula here is, and it, again, it sort of ties into what your guys are going to do all the time, is I have paired up with Dick Max. Dick Max is a famous pub just up the street, and they now have a brewery and a brew house. So during the summer we started last year we're ready to kick off again probably march april we do a beer and cheese yeah, tasting tour yeah. and the tour is an hour and a half and they will take you through the brewery they will talk you through what they make but when they're finished now we go in just to the room next door which is a tap house we sit down and we have cheese to match all four or five of their beers mm -hmm. and it's, it's great from the point of view that some people are just maybe like their craft beer some people maybe just like their cheese or maybe you're somewhere in the middle that you're like oh i like but once you start to pair it you taste it different that you start to go wow that's amazing with this one and so on now it will once yeah off. it no. happened no it happens yeah. from once we start it's usually every wednesday Excellent. every wednesday you know, yeah. and we're once we get it ready and stuff we'll be able to you know offer to more groups mm -hmm. and so on like that. if we say like yourselves we might be able to schedule one in and it's a yeah. fabulous or really idea. Is, yeah now i'm biased but it's, it's definitely the best story in England. <laughs> what i'm going to give you i'm just going to give you a small little sample of cheese here right it's irish it's all irish um i always include something like this on my cheese board and one of the reasons i include the first one it's called millions and it's a smoked millions millions is the name of the the townland where it is so in west cork okay why i always love putting this cheese on the board it's probably the, it's the cheese that started the cheese revolution in Ireland, this one, by a fabulous lady. Her name was Veronica Steele. Unfortunately, she passed away about two years ago, but her family still make the cheese. So, sort of like you're talking about, say, the cheddars and stuff. If we were in Ireland, like even, say, from the 19, sort of 1900s, 1910, all was made in Ireland was those large, big, sort of processed cheeses. And mainly, some, a lot of times for export. That continued until probably around the 70s, until you had, like, our cheese revolution was driven by all strong, independent women. In around the West Cork area, with no sort of direct connection to each other. The only connection that most of them had was there were Quakers. The Quaker, oh, yeah. Really? And oh. the part of the Quaker sort of belief and stuff is that you must make food to share. That's one of the things. But the lady that made this, Veronica Steele, she started, she married into a dairy farmer, started making cheese, and just was just, can we get good cheese like you can get in the continent and if you know what makes good cheese it's first of all you need good grass good milk and then the cheese maker she started making it and luckily enough she was able to start inspiring so many other people so i always think that millions should be part of a cheese board i'm going to pass it around i'd like you when you're eating it because we can pass around again to eat it this way start with this one move yourself up this one what you have next is you've got sheep this one is from county cavan Okay. Another fabulous, uh, fabulous family. They're the crop family. Again, a Quaker family from Cavan. And they make cow, goat, and sheep, but all raw, all raw cheeses. And this one will be what you're looking at. It's, I would have cut it up from one of those little things there. That's the cow one. But this, it's funny the way cheese changes. Like, you know, and the difference between buying cheese, say, in a supermarket or somewhere else. That this will have a very different flavour today than what I would have been selling it at before Christmas in June or whatever. This one is about nine months old, but now it's got a real aniseed flavour. And there's no aniseed or anything put into it, but it's the way it starts to develop and change different. Eat the rind and all of them. Then your last cheese here is made by a fabulous guy up in the Aran Islands. He's the only one in the Aran Islands who makes cheese, because there's not much grass there. So he makes a goat's cheese. And this one, the one that he makes, is like a parmesan. So it's almost like parmesan, but it's made with goat. And this guy's brilliant, because he was saying that when he got the goats first, like, if you don't know the Iron Islands, like, they're small islands, 
but there's pretty much just stone walls, a little bit of grass, and he was great, like, because he was like, he's got a small couple of fields, but he was like, just let them out, because they can't go anywhere. They're just going to eat your neighbor's grass. But he was like, they can't get off the island. Like, you get a phone call, going, you're going to He'd be like, ah, oh, they'll be back. They'll be back for the milking. They'll be back. So don't be, and he's like, don't worry about it. So I'm going to pass this around, and when you're finished, I do have, we can pass these around. We have Joe's Chris. They're vegetable crisps, made in sort of, these are produced in North Cork. Another example of sometimes where Irish food is, you've got, uh, this would have been traditionally a guy that's got a, um, he's, a, he's a crop grower, root crop grower, and just the market wasn't there for some of these veg, so he just looked to do something different, and these are fabulous. They're, and be careful, they're quite addictive. <laughs> um, so I'm going to pass it on. I'd like you to start with this one. It is a smoked one, smoked millions from West Cork. You're moving on to the next one then is from County Cavan, okay? So that is uh, Corleggy cheese, and then you've got the Aran Island goat cheese. Just pass around and nibble away on that <laughs> there. How to do it. You know, like selling food or selling anything is about, it's about known, being very connected to the product. Like, there's very few cheeses. The only ones I wouldn't have a strong connection to is some of the European cheeses because I don't know them directly. Um, whereas most of these, I've either been to their house, they've been here. Uh, like, you know, so there's a very strong connection. And even uh, just before you go now, because I know you want to go, like, the kosh is, first of all, it's the Irish word for cheese, kosh. Um, it's that thing here. People, you know, sometimes people don't see the bottom of the eye. And they go like, what's cats? And I'm going, that's... <laughs> if someone asks that, I go, that keeps the mice away from the cheese. Um, kosh is, what Kosh is, Kosh is the Irish cheese makers guild. And they're brilliant. Again, started by those first individuals that started to make cheese in Ireland. But they contacted me the other day, about two or three days ago. They want to hold their AGM in Dingle this year. Uh, which is brilliant. And for the, because... They really, really love what I'm doing. They want to yeah, just, they're, they're like, no, because they all say, oh, we're going to come down sometime, but they want to hold their AGM here in April so that they can, and they were like, because we really, really want to just be part of the shop as well, because mm -hmm. I support them so much, mm -hmm. which is lovely, because mm -hmm. there's a really good sort of cross connection with everybody mm -hmm. that's, no matter what you're selling, and I'll mm -hmm. shoot. And so on.